Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is just a quick update video. In a previous video, I showed you a couple of different Linux distributions running on the GPT Pocket 2. You should probably check out that video first. I just wanted to update a few things based on recommendations that were made to me. The first is that I couldn't get wireless to work properly when I was running uh, Debian, and as several people pointed out, that's because the default download that you get from Debian.org is uh, free software only, and if you wanted to be able to use the wireless driver, you're going to want to get the version with non-free software. So if you go to uh, the Debian website, it's a little bit tricky to find. I find the easiest thing to do is just Google Debian non-free and you'll be taken to a page with the latest version of uh, Debian with various desktop environments. So this is GNOME. This is basically the default software that you would get. The only difference is that it includes proprietary drivers as opposed to free software only. And so now wireless should be working. So let's go ahead and uh, let that boot. Um, as I mentioned, you should probably check out the first video first. This is really just meant to be an update uh, for people who had questions or comments or recommendations. As usual, when it first boots, everything is sideways. And the easiest way to rotate the screen is to open a terminal window. Type xrender Oh, right. And now, adjust the screen brightness and use the cursor to go on up to the corner here. And Wi Fi allows us to select a network and connect to a network. Now I'm just running off of the live USB here. It's uh, loaded into memory. This allows me to use the operating system, but not to make any uh, changes or save anything. It also isn't really the best way to test things like battery life or overall performance, but it does tell you sort of what works out of the box. And for the most part, everything seems to work. I can't really say much about sleep or uh, long-term performance, but I can tell you that we are now connected to the internet. Well, we should be connected to the internet. and it should support audio and video and everything else that you would expect. So for instance here, we can play a video. Hey, I just created a Wix website for my business. Let me show you how I did it. Let's go to Wix.com. Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Asus Novago. And at first glance, it just looks like a typical Windows laptop. And in some ways, that's exactly what it is. It's a 13. So for the most part, everything seems to work. Uh, one thing that I noticed is that the volume keys don't work. So you can adjust the volume from up here, but mute doesn't do anything. Volume up, volume down, don't do anything. You can adjust the screen brightness using those shortcuts. You can use the left and right mouse click keys. You can even use the fan mute button. So everything else works for the most part. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that the default DPI scaling is uh, a little bit on the low side. You might be able to find some ways to uh, to adjust that or to make some changes, but the uh, simplest thing that I've found is just to open up universal access and you can make text larger. You could also make the, um, actually in here, I don't think we have the option to adjust the cursor size, but that's one thing that helps a little bit. So that's a quick look at uh, Debian using the non-free software drivers. Let's go ahead and shut down and I'll show you Something else that was recommended to me, which is on Fedora, I could not get the screen to rotate. And it turns out there's a fix for that too, but it's only a sort of partial fix. So here we've got, again, I'm gonna press the power button, function in F12 to get to the boot menu. And we're gonna boot from Fedora 28 here, start Fedora Workstation Live. Um, the GPD Pocket 2, of course, has a 7-inch screen, weighs about 1.1 uh, pounds. Um, it's basically a pocket-sized little computer. It looks a little bit thinner than it actually is because of this sort of bezel uh, or curved side here. Uh, it's a pretty nice little machine that's up for pre-order via an Indiegogo campaign for $5.29 and up. It's going to sell for a higher price than that later. It has a Core M3 7Y30 processor and 4 gigs to 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. 
Uh, it's small, which is really sort of one of the most interesting and exciting things about it. It's something that you can literally just fold up, put in your pocket, take with you wherever you go. Um, but it's small, which means that it has a fairly small keyboard, which could make typing a little bit difficult and make seeing the screen in some situations difficult. So is it a perfect replacement for a full-size laptop? I don't know. But you can check out lilliputing.com for a more detailed preview. Uh, here we go. So we're in Fedora. And the first thing you'll notice here is that the out-of-the-box ex experience uh, DPI scaling basically seems to be set at a much higher level, so it's a lot easier to see the graphics, the text, everything just looks much, much better. Unfortunately, it's out of the, the, I haven't found a good way from this environment to go ahead and change the um, screen orientation, so everything is sideways. But you can change from the Wayland display server, which we're using, to an Xorg display server and that will actually help. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. The first thing you need to do, and this is just when you're running from a live system, if you had it installed it would probably work a little bit differently here, but it won't let me do the next part unless I set up a password for the default user. So I'm going to just set up a password, testing one. Actually it's not going to take testing one. Let's say test one ting. Test one ting. All right, so now we've got a password. Now I'm gonna log out. Oop. Try and do everything sideways here. And that should bring us back here, and I'm gonna try to log in. But now you'll see there's a little gear next to the sign in button here. I'm gonna say I wanna switch to GNOME org. Now I'm going to type the testing password, and when we log in, everything's going to look a little bit smaller. So you can already see maybe that the uh, cursor's smaller. Basically what we've done is we've switched from the uh, Wayland display server to an X display server, and that's what it looks like on the screen. So uh, the downside is that everything's a little bit tinier. The upside is that now we can do xrander o right and the screen rotates so you can use everything right side up again we can go into universal access settings we can adjust the text and here we can also adjust the size of the pointer so let's make it sort of the medium size or even larger and that could make it a little bit easier to use the operating system But generally speaking, I think a lot of the stuff that's on the screen is still going to be a little bit on the small side. Uh, now, while we're here, I'll show you we can connect to the internet. And we should be able to run Firefox again. And basically, it works just like a computer, because that's exactly what it is. Uh, you can see we've got the screen brightness buttons work, and let's see if volume works. I believe it does in here. Yep. And you can hear audible feedback as we do that as well. So that's a look at Fedora and Debian again using a couple of fixes that were recommended to me by uh, members of the community, so thanks for, uh, for pointing out those issues. Um, it's still sort of, you know, not a perfect out-of-the-box experience because I think the fact that everything looks so small can be a little bit tricky. Of course, you can get around some of these things by, you know, zooming in, using a web browser. Um, but I think people who are a little bit more experienced with Linux than I am might be able to try different desktop environments, different scaling, different uh, command line tools. This is still pretty much just the out-of-the-box experience, but I wanted to show you that a couple of the issues that I encountered just running live USBs uh, can be overcome fairly simply in the case of Debian just by using a different disk image and in the case of uh, Fedora just by uh, going and setting a user password and then changing the display server from Wayland to X. So 
you know, is this uh, is this the most user friendly thing? No, but in a lot of ways, neither is Linux. Uh, it does show though that the GPT Pocket 2, while it's designed uh, to ship with Windows 10 software, is perfectly capable of running different operating systems. Again, you can go back and check out the first video that I posted for more details about uh, Ubuntu as well as these other operating systems. I just wanted to do a quick update showing that some of the show-stopping issues that I ran across are not necessarily the showstoppers that they seem to be at first glance. Uh, advanced users can probably go a lot further into uh, what's possible with a device like this, but I just wanted to do a quick overview. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and an update on running a couple of different Linux-based operating systems. Uh, one thing that I wanted to point out is that several people asked if you could run Linux Mint on this. I haven't had any real luck with that. Uh, it's possible that other people might have more success, but when I tried running it from a USB flash drive, I tried two different versions of Linux Mint, uh, one with the Cinnamon desktop, one with the XFCE desktop. I don't know that it should make much difference, but neither one would load. Uh, the screen was on, but no text showed up, no boot menu, nothing. Um, and it just sort of seems to stop partway through the process. I tried installing it onto a USB, or onto a, a DVD. I made a, a, a burned a disk image onto a DVD, plugged that in, tried that from a USB DVD drive. I heard it spin for a little while and then it stopped and again, nothing happened. So uh, Linux Mint out of the box does not work as well as these other ones. Again, advanced users might be able to find ways around that. And these are just a couple of the many, many different Linux-based operating systems that are available. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to show that theoretically you can use some of them on this device. Brad Linder, Lilliputing. You can find more details at lilliputing.com. And this is the GPD Pocket 2. You can find more details about that also at lilliputing.com or at GPD's website or Indiegogo.